Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So, in this session, I'll take you through the fantasy session and the masturbation session. Amen. 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 Okay, basically, the fantasy session, unlike the porn session, many fantasy has to do a lot with ladies. Not that it's only ladies who fantasize. Omano, the makeup of this piece was based on the ladies' fantasy. Amen. 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 So, the fantasy session, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says, so keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, and fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising Him always. Philippians 4, verse 8. So the fantasy section, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Always being taught, good girls don't. Always trying hard to make sure you don't. Developing what looks like a natural disguise for the opposite sex. Ensuring that you only have one and call nobody else ex. The perfect little girl in a scary and wicked world, soft in sex. She's physically red and pure. Yet when she's all alone, purity is something of which she ain't so sure. Sure, it is really something that lacks when she dives deeper into her personality. Deep. Dignity is what she lost the first time she considered what is real. Reality is what disqualifies her still as evidence proves. The thief is here more than just still. Wanting to remain pure in her death, she always imagines a stronger force wearing a tight shirt. The plate button is traced as the events displaying in her mind and thought. Sitting back, she dreams a stronger force forcing itself on her. She's bored, not wanting to be disturbed. She throws the remote away. She's never bored. She sees herself trying hard to resist. Yet, to no avail, then she delightfully gives in as is permitted to forcefully prevail. The feeling that she's purely out of control excites her, driving her up the sapira in delight till she reaches the peak. Her story's climax. Being the only being around gives her the opportunity to more than just relax. She's a good girl and she doesn't. Making sure her physical being agrees with her mother. He's a devil and he doesn't. Forcing himself on her, he doesn't even bother. Does this really count to purity in the eyes of her heavenly father? Pleasure is all she desires. Not acting out is all purity requires. Fantasy is what she uses to satisfy her desires. Using her brain to pleasure herself, she never tires. Being labeled a good girl who doesn't is what she always desires. I get your argument, sis. However, how about we together analyze it? Please. Firstly, the truth is, good girls do, and it's functional. The sex scene can be your teacher. They, however, do only after exchanging the marriage vows before the preacher. The Holy Scriptures have the best explanation. They are the best teacher. Secondly, you have to face the fact that this, despite being saved, your mind is still deferred. Performing to the pattern of this world is therefore what the untransformed you longs for. Nevertheless, because you want to prove to everyone you've been to the Holy One reconciled, you try hard to attach yourself to neither a stranger nor a friend. Trouble ain't what you're looking for. You're afraid if you do, the hope you get out and have you an adulterous from the Christian community exile. Your messed up mind therefore comes to your rescue. A safe way that can help you have the pleasure you long for and argue you still the renewed you. You therefore delight in a strangers and blessed as he forces himself on you. You argue beyond your control, so you trust him to take you for a ride after the sapiro as you simply relax. You completely give yourself as he actually drives you to the peak. The story is climax. The intense pleasure of reaching the peak is the reason you keep leading a double life. Let truth be told, you'd never desire to have anyone force themselves on you in real life. A force that makes you excited in your world of fantasy, yet disgusted in your world in real life. You, however, do it even more as it still whispers you're a good girl. He's always forcing himself on you. You don't have control. You don't. You're surely a good girl. Truth be told, if good girls don't be the standard, then you're far from being good. So sorry for sounding so harsh. He who looks at a woman to last after her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Likewise, she who looks at a man to last after him has already committed adultery with him in her heart. I agree. Physically, you're a good girl. You don't. But spiritually, Christ says you do in your heart, and so you're not. I didn't write this to condemn you. There ain't no condemnation to those that are in Christ. I wrote this to tell you the truth behind your fantasy. Think about these things is what Paul and Timothy to the Philippians had to say, whatever is pure, whatever is holy, whatever is true. The put us on every page of this dog in overcrowding. Tell me if your fantasy agrees to any one of the suggestions. For front reality, I can write this to make you feel bad and hate yourself for life. That ain't my intention. Let know your perfectionism hinder you from continuously striving towards perfection. Refuse to stay on the ground each time you fall. Rise up and battle. I suggest you trust Shannon. This is every young woman's battle. Reading her book will surely prepare you for the battle. Learn to guard your heart and mind to despise your, your physical body. Staying away from those skinny romantic novels and movies will keep you strong. Allow God's word to transform you as it continuously renews your mind year long. I know it will take time. Whoever said Rome was built in a day. But if you're patiently persistent, God will surely make your way. He knows he may be a sexual being. And so he made marriage to be the place 
enjoy that part of your being. But right now, you gotta learn to control yourself. From you to last step, link the Holy Spirit is with you. Let Him guide you as you discover the mystery hidden in Christ that revealed. Then you escape the fantasy station and you realize you've been really relieved. What fantasy and pornography lead to masturbation? So the masturbation station, ladies and gentlemen. Paul is the revealing generation. With his mind messed up, all he wants to do is experiment his body's reaction. Each passing lady looking like the ones you saw on display, whether or not her body parts she decides to display, locking himself up, he excites himself to release, imprisoned by a simple play. Call it the revealing generation. And like what he sees, what she reads, has her mind messed up, thinking of what would happen if she was like the lady in the book, booked up, always unsure whether or not her feelings would be mixed up. Yet she still wants to make it more real, and so she invokes her hands on herself. She's never fed up. While he holds the phone in one hand, she holds a book elsewhere. And using the other, they both excite themselves as they impair. Their kind of minds think it's whole fun, yet they become the worst for wear. The simple nature convinces them and then see, it doesn't evolve a pair. But is what they're told really true? Is the act really pure? Is it fair? Christ said, if you look at a woman to last after her, then you've already committed adultery in your heart with her. Meaning, the sexual sin is committed in the heart. The physical is simply a continuation of what was studied in the heart. The simple act. Remember, Christ is more concerned about how your eyes and mind react. It all starts with your sight, then your mind and heart get involved in the act. Your hands and other parts of your body let it jump in, and you claim it into a simple act. Perhaps I'm just trying to be harsh. In fact, someone helped clarify what's holy about the entire act. What really causes reaction, love or lust, is your response to fact. There are times that it's simply an innocent way of quenching the fire. But are you really quenching the fire, or you're feeling the blazing fire? She always excited herself to go before going on death, quenching the fire. Yet the whole night, her mind thought of how unsatisfied she still was. She had fueled the fire. She always gave in to compensate her dissatisfaction. She had inflamed the desire. Where still, the act comes hunting after you, even after you get married. For guys, your wife will conclude you don't find her attractive, knowing she can't measure up to the ladies on your computer screen so seductive. And that's the worst condition you can ever put her in, trust me. You surely send a million shivers down her spine. For the ladies, one lady explains of the terrible impact the act had. The situation was so bad, I'm sure it left her rather extremely sad than glad. She found her husband to be different from her own magic touch, and so she kept on pushing him to adjust to her magic touch. Till one day, as she told him, he politely left, telling her to go on with her magic touch. The bottom line is we were never meant to fly so. God created them male and female. That's a pattern we have for. Eve was Adam's suitable maid, so was Adam to Eve, but knew they needed each other. That's what I believe, man leaving everyone to become one with his wife, that's the way we are relieved. There is, however, hope for those that are fallen victims to the act. For the guys, remember, it's every young man's battle. Likewise for the ladies, it's every young woman's battle. Don't be deceived that you're the only one struggling in the battle. Neither be deceived that you're okay struggling. Stand up in battle. Whether or not you're based in England, Christ death revealed has the arsenal you need. Jesus offers all the weapons you need. You show the friend with you. Last, don't tell yourself. My word, my If you can faithfully guard what you feed yourself, I doubt you'll ever desire to excite or pleasure yourself.